Okay, today we're going to add a new aspect to our card. Um, I'm do a, sorry about that. I want to do a banner that goes across the top that says Happy Holidays before I add anything to the game. And then I'm going to kind of get into my backpack here and uh, clean that up. If you remember, when we drop things in our backpacks, it makes it so that we can use those program or that script elsewhere. But if I look at this, I don't know what script each one of these is. So I'm going to get rid of them all from my backpack right now. Um, and I'll explain to all that later, why we're getting rid of those. It's just going to be uh, because whenever we are doing these projects, if we can create some kind of code uh, that we can use repeatedly from one project to another, then why would I go back and do the whole code again? Um, like, for instance, in our last project with the architecture blocks, we had things falling from the top of the screen. And if they uh, fell and hit the black, then it would stop and it would stamp itself and start over again. There's part of that code that I want to use for this. So instead of me recreating the whole code, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to go back and um, instead of redoing the whole code, I can grab a piece from the last project we did and drag it onto this one. So that's kind of uh, what I'm interested in doing here. So um, the first thing that I want to do today is I want to create a banner that's going to go at the top of my car. Um, so in order to do that, I can't just uh, pick a banner. I'm going to actually paint or create my own sprite. You can think of the banner as being kind of a background, but just because it's in the background uh, in our thing, or in this programming, if we're in the background, so if we go to the code, You'll notice that up at the top where it says motion, there isn't any motion that we can add to this. So we can't add any motion to a background. And because of that, it makes it so uh, I can't really put a Happy Holidays or something in the background or a Merry Christmas, anything like that, um, simply because uh, it won't be able to move. If I put it in there and created my own background for this, then it would be fine if I just left it as Happy Holidays. But I want this to move, and as you can see, there's no motion for backgrounds. So we're going to create our own sprite. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some text or do a text box and put in Happy Holidays. As you can see, that's extremely small. And if I want to make sure it all fits, I just have to mess around with my text box. And drag it to where it needs to be on the screen so that it's all fitting on there. Okay, once I did that, I can choose uh, more festive colors. Go with red or green just by playing with my uh, color blocks up here and change my font on it to whatever I want. You do have to click it first to change your font. Now this seems like more of an elf themed. It's kind of the curly font. So that's the one I'm going to go with. But you can choose whatever you want. Okay, now I have this sprite, but it's still not scrolling across the screen. So today we're going to look at how to make it scroll across the screen like that, in the way that I want it to. So I'm going to want it to go from the middle of the screen, go all the way to the left, and then start back on the right and come left again. 
in order to do that, we got to uh, set some new variables. Let's go back over to where our code is. And I'm going to create some new variables. So to make a variable, I'm going to do x plus 1, because that's x position 1. And I'm going to make a new variable y pause 1. So if I look at this, where it's at right now. That's kind of where I want that to be, is up at the top like that. So if I look at where my Y is, my Y is currently at 28 and my X is at 36. So you might want to make a note of that. Also, you'll notice that whenever we created the variables, these two boxes showed up. And we had that in our last one um, whenever we originally did it. Uh, those boxes showed up and we made a timer project, uh, timer variable. For this case, we don't necessarily want to see those. So next to where it has the uh, X pause 1 and Y pause 1 we just created, if we check and uncheck these boxes, uncheck they disappear. If it's checked, it displays what our X pause and Y pause is. Okay, so once we have our variables in place, uh, we're going to do some code that goes with it. So if I go to set my variable to, because I've created two variables, x position 1 and y position 1, I need to set my x and y to those spots. So now it's where we need where it's currently at. If I like where this positioning is, I'm going to make it so it's x is 36 and y is 28. This would be a good starting position for this. Um, just so you see what happens if, if I had left that at zero. If I was to click this script, well, currently it's not actually set to do anything, so uh, we can just make it 36 and 28, and I'll show you later what that does because we haven't defined these variables to do anything to that. So now if you click the green flag, nothing is still happening with your X and Y positions. Um, and we can change this to whatever we want. the same way we had been doing. Okay, so now we're going to do a go to, which is actually what's going to make uh, our values change here. And we're going to do go to x and y. So this makes our happy holidays. I'm going to rerun this script and change this to another color so we can see it better. This is what would actually make our X and Y positions go to that uh, area. So I have it set to 36 and 28. This is where if I had this at zero and zero, and now if I click variables, I'll make it go to X position one and Y position one. And now it's when if I run the script, it drops it to a different position. I don't like it there. I like it where we had it, which was at 36 and 28. Now if I run the script, it puts it back where it was. So now if this is scrolling across the screen like this on an endless loop. I don't want my Y to change. I just want the X to change before scrolling across like that. So what I actually want to do is drop a forever loop in. And while we're at it, we should just drop an event in, which is when the green flag is clicked. 
So right from the very beginning of this program, this whole uh, Happy Holidays is going to start moving. So now that I have a forever loop, I want this to move from right to left. So I'm going to put in a new control or a variable that's sort of If I put in a new variable, I can make it so change. And I don't want the Y position to change, so I'm going to make this change X position 1. And if I'm going left, if I think about math, going to the left means going negative. So I need to change this to a negative. And I'll do negative 10. And so it's a bigger movement. When I do this, I'm telling it forever to go to negative 10. And I'm actually going to click this so that it displays what my X position is. X position is currently at 36. That's where we set it. Click the green flag. You see how negative this is going. It has gone to uh, negative what is it, 3,548,000. So it has gone really negative, and our thing hasn't moved. And I don't want it to keep going that far. I don't want it to go off the screen and just disappear from forever. So uh, what I'm going to actually do is put a motion back in. It says it's going to go into a uh, X position one and Y position one again. Duplicate this, drop it in. Duplicate this and drop it in. So now it's forever changing by negative 10. And you see it just keeps going more and more negative. It's off the screen. We can't see it. So we have to uh, reimagine this. We have to go in and fix this situation. Which means that I need to drop an if statement. So I've told it to change by negative 10. And to go to this position. But it's not going to. Every time I click it, it'll start it. But it's never going to stop now we have to drop a new operator in, which would make it an if. Because I don't want it to leave. So as you can tell, whenever I first start this, it looks like when it's at x is negative 464, then it's already off the screen and it's not doing anything else. If you remember from our first, I think it was like our first day, we talked about how we had an X and Y axis here. And this is negative 240. This part is 240. So if I've taken the, this right side, and that's all I can see right now, um, and I moved it all the way over, that would be at negative 480. So this edge of the S going all the way off the screen is at negative 480 because it's 240 up to 0, from negative 240 to 0, and then from 0 all the way up to 240. Add those two together, that gives you the 480. So I want to put an operator in. It says if something happens, then I want to make it go back to the beginning, right? So that it's not always off the screen. So I'm going to duplicate my X position again. So if I say, if my X position is less than, and now I can make this negative 480, then 
I want to reset my X position so that it comes all the way back to the right here. So I'm going to set X position 1 to 480. Now, if we drop this inside this loop, it's going to make it so that as soon as this gets to negative 480, it comes back to the right and starts over again. Notice I have a little pause on the left here. Maybe I'll change this to negative 464. doesn't pause as long and we can adjust that to get rid of that pause as much as possible so even do negative 450 you notice that as I change this number I'm down to negative 440 and the pause seems to keep getting smaller and smaller So you can uh, toy around with this number. I accidentally got rid of the negative there. By toying around the, with the number, you're going to see that it's going to get to a point where I can make it so it's not pausing at all. There's a lot of trial and error in this. Now, if I want to get rid of my X position thing that's showing up, it's now just scrolling across the top. It moves pretty quickly. I can fix that by making this a smaller number. Instead of going down by negative 10, I set it to negative 8. That slows it down. If I set it to negative 5, it slows down even more. And so now I have this endless scroll across the screen, and I can set my colors to be whatever I want. Slow it down even more, and you won't see some of that lagging that's, that goes across there. Like even at negative 5, you see it kind of gets ugly as far as looks a little hoppy like disjointed almost like you can see like little clicks in it if I set it to negative three that goes away and if you remember from the last project we did we found a way to make it so it was a smooth transition um, when we were dropping those things and so if we look back at that project I'm gonna save this before I leave If I look back at my last project, which was the uh, architecture blocks, if I look inside that, go to dome was one of the ones we had. That's the wrong one, but yeah, I don't know what happened to my architecture project, it's gone. Uh, but we had the one where we had the blocks falling, like the dome would fall, and then the triangle would fall, and it went through that whole that whole process. 
Um, there we go. So if you remember, we were able to get rid of how chunky it looked when we were going to the right. And it was because we did that re repeat until. Um, for this one, it's not going to work like that because of our, um, our script is on a constant scroll. So we can't make it repeat until something is happening. Um, so that's not necessarily going to get rid of it. What I do want to do, though, is I do want to grab a piece of this code and drop it in our backpack. Because I also want to make it so that our uh, tomorrow, whenever we restart this project and we add to it, because remember, I'm making you add a game to it. Um, I want to make it so that we can play a game using where stuff can fall from the ceiling or from the top of the uh, script here. So I'm going to grab uh, one of these pieces of script and I'm going to drop it into my backpack simply because I want to be able to use that tomorrow. And additionally, we still have the same problem that we were having where we don't know which is which. Like if I put more than one in here, I won't know uh, what it is. So we can actually create a block, and I can call this block Fallen. I'll call it Falling Object. And now I'll take this, drop it on there. I'll drop that in my backpack. So now I've defined what falling object is. And so it doesn't really affect what is happening with my program. But once I've made this definition, then I don't need either of these things in my backpack. All I need to do is drop falling object into my backpack. And when I reopen my elf project, this is my holiday card project. When I reopen that project, I'm going to have a falling object block in my backpack that I can just pull out of nowhere. So instead of having to redo all that code, it's already in place. So that now falling object is defined, and I should be able just to click on that and it will make whatever happen. Whichever object I want to fall should occur. So, all right, that's about it for today. If you have any questions, you can ask them now or send me an email. Um, again, this project hasn't even officially started yet. I'm just giving you some options for how we can do some things. Tomorrow I'm gonna do our last real option and then I'm gonna give you guys about a week, week and a half. Uh, to create your holiday cards.